Hello again, this is Christopher Wasanya, President of Atlantic Waste and Power in New Jersey. Um, there are some questions that people have asked and tonight we're going to answer it in a video. We've done answers, written answers, but I guess a demonstration and a spoken answer is more powerful than a written answer. So today we're going to tell you, give you the answer of how solar works. People have asked us, how does this solar thing work? So we're going to do a little demonstration for you today. So what I have here is a portable solar panel. These are two 10 watt panels. And as you can see in the back, you can see the wire connections. They are connected in series. Now, consider this, the sun is your source of energy. This is your gas pump. So your gas pump determines how much gas you can put into your tank. The sun hits the panels through a chemical process. It turns the sun energy into direct current, DC current. Now, so this is your pump that goes into your gas tank. The sun is the fuel. So the sun hits the panel. The panel acts as your gas pump and directs the fuel into your gas tank. Your gas tank in this situation is your battery. So, the bigger your pump, the more fuel you could put into your battery. The bigger your tank, the longer you can run your engine. So that's part one of the system. Now the second part I'm going to show you is your gas tank and your engine. Okay, your gas tank is your battery. There's a battery built into this system here. And then your engine is the inverter. So what happens? That solar panel I showed you earlier takes that energy and it stores it in the battery that's here. Now how does it do that? Well, it goes through a couple of processes. There is something called a charge controller. It takes the DC current, which is what comes from your solar panels, just like what you have in your cell phone and your old flashlights or torch to Niger my Nigerian friends. And then it stores that energy in a battery that's contained within this device. So this is a, this is an, a DC system. So it's a direct current, direct current to direct current. Now, that energy is stored in your battery. When you need it, the inverter takes that energy and it sends it to your devices. So in this instance, as you can see, we have little wires that lets you charge your phones, your cameras, um, your little iPads. That's what this will do and it will do it for a couple of hours. Now, how does that relate to what we do for you? Well, behind, behind me here is a solar panel. As you can see, this is much bigger than this one. What we sell is actually much bigger than this. What we sell is about this high and about this wide. Okay, so that's a bigger gas pump. And we put more batteries in there so you have a bigger gas tank. Now, how does that work in your house? How do you take that DC current that's coming from these panels to turn it into AC current that you could use for your TV, your microwave, your air conditioner. Well, very simple. This box you see here is a high frequency inverter. It's a prototype that we're testing. And what it does is the inverter, the charge controller are all built into this one box. So this, the energy coming from your panels goes into this box. This box sends it into the battery and the battery stores it. Remember what I told you? This is your gas, this is your pump. Your pump takes the fuel, which is the DC current, and it stores it in your gas tank, which is your batteries. When you call for it, the inverter serves as your engine, and the engine sends the power to the appliances you need. So think about your car, you put gas in the tank, you step on the gas, the engine produces the electric, the engine produces the horsepower that turns the wheels and the harder you push on the gas the faster it goes. That's exactly the same process with your inverter. So hopefully that answered the question, how does solar work? Now the next question people asked was, well, what happens when it's raining or what happens at night? Well, remember when I told you that your gas tank is your batteries? Well, most of the systems we design are designed with a day to a day and a half autonomy. So 24 hours to 36 hour autonomy. What does that mean? It means you can go 24 hours to 36 hours without a bit, any bit of sunshine and you still have 
power left to power your appliances. Well, if you go longer than 36 hours with no sunshine, I'm sorry, you're going to have to need an external source to charge either the grid or a generator. Now, for those of you who live in Nigeria, can you think of a period you went through 36 hours with no sunshine? And the answer is no. So generally you're covered. Even during the rainy season when it rains, at some point the sun comes out and the sun replenishes the energy you've taken out of your batteries. So remember my initial introduction? The sun is the fuel. Your solar panel is the pump. Your batteries are the gas tank. Okay, so you're putting fuel into your gas tank and you use it. And as long as the sun shines, that process continues. The sun puts, you, this, is your gas, this is your gas pump and your batteries are your tank. So that is it basically for Solar 101, how solar works. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to give you some tips, okay? Some energy saving tips. Um, this is a big one. These are your traditional light bulbs. Okay, I have two of them here. Uh, this bulb is a 40 watt bulb. Um, most people use about 60 watt bulbs. Now, this consumes 60 watts or a little bit more than 60 watts if it's a 60 watt bulb. 40 watts or a little more than 40 watts is a 40 watt bulb. Now, on a solar, solar system, when we, size, when we size your home, we calculate the light bulbs you use. So now, this is 40 watts you're using. So you have five of these, you use 200 watts. You have 10 of these, you've used 400, 400 watts. Now, what we advise people to do is replace them with these compact fluorescent light bulbs, okay? This compact fluorescent light bulb produces an equivalent of 50 watts lumens or luminescence, but it only uses 13 watts. There are actually more energy efficient versions of this. So think about it. 10 of these only, is only using 130 watts versus where you would need three of these that will use 120 watts. So three to 10. This wins every day, okay? So that's it. Um, last thing, uh, this is the future of solar power. Um, right now, they've not, uh, they've, the efficiency is not as good as what you get from a traditional panel. A uh, traditional panel has been around since the 1950s, even though they were initially introduced in the 1800s, but traditional pa panels have been around since the 1950s. And they last about 25 years. We're getting close to the maximum efficiency you can get out of this thing. So we're try people are going to new generation technologies. This panel is really this thin. It's not really very efficient yet, but eventually, like, as you know, the longer things are out there, the more efficient they become. So what is the goal? Um, when this eventually happens, this could be on your windows, this could be on your walls, or this could be on the roof of your houses. So this is the net, this is the future of solar. So hopefully this evening, we're able to answer two of your major questions that you've asked us all the time. I will add this to our FAQ section, and hopefully uh, it would address some concerns you've had. Now, if you have any questions, you can visit our web, web page, www.atlanticwastepower.com. Or you can email us at info at atlanticwastepower.com. So again, it's www.atlanticwastepower.com or info at atlanticwastepower.com. This is Christopher Omar Sanya thanking you. Have a wonderful day. Take care.